everyone. So after my last failure at raising H. Lonus, I took a break from the species and just from fish rain for a while. Um, yeah, to fail like that kind of crushes your soul, especially when you spend like six hours a day on the animals and then you lose everything. But it does happen. Back at it again. Hopefully this round goes better. So far I've already learned a lot. I have made a few mistakes already, but I think that they're actually kind of key things I needed to learn. Um, and these are things I definitely think would have improved the last run. So I started out raising H. Philonus again, which is a subspecies of Hippocampus cuda, the estuary seahorse. Um, this male, I caught a male from out in Kaneohe Bay. He was pregnant when I caught him. He refused to eat and actually showed signs of malnourishment. His belly was pinched. Um, the animal did not eat for three or four days before he finally gave birth. When he gave birth, I had about 500 juveniles, give or take. Um, about 50 or 60, I had a filter on the tank, and a lot got sucked up. I'm not sure how many, but oh well. Um, he gave birth the day after the full moon, which might be something good to note. I pulled the male from the tank, and he is now in his own separate tank. Some of the things I noticed right away were um, just different changes in water flow and how I needed to adjust water flow settings. So previously, I had my seahorse juveniles in a 16-gallon tall tank with a 16 inch air bar going through the center at a pretty high flow rate. What I have noticed with um, the babies from this male are that they're somewhat larger. And if I actually keep the water flow or the air flow off, um, the babies are actually strong enough swimmers where they can move and hunt. So I think one of my problems is that my water flow was too high and the babies didn't have a chance to actually chase down food. They were subjected to just eating whatever went past their face and I did not have a high enough food density in order to feed them with that method. So I found that actually moving the air bar to one side of the tank to one of the um, longer faces uh, slowed down the flow. It keeps it enough, it keeps the flow strong enough for the animals to stay in suspension, but it gives them enough waiting time um, where they're in calmer water where they can actively move and hunt and hit prey items. So I think that's one good thing to watch. I really started to see hunting behavior after day two and day three. Um, the babies are now at, I guess today would be day eight. Um, they're pretty large. I did have a few mistakes early on. Um, I released about maybe two or three hundred babies at about day four or five just because I realized I didn't have enough food for them. I wasn't set up for cultures. Catching this male seahorse was kind of random. Um, so I was not prepared to feed all the animals. So because I was not prepared to feed all the animals, I just released as many as I felt, you know, I was comfortable enough with keeping or the, you know what I mean. I released a bunch, kept as many as I thought I could manage and feed. So they have been fed Artemia and wild-caught plankton toes. Those are mostly wild-caught copepods. Um, I was trying to raise them only on cultured food, but I just didn't have the means to do that this time around. So I've been raising them on copepods. One thing I did learn was that I was trying to call out all the floating seahorses at the top of the tank. Um, that was actually not the best thing I could have done. A lot of the literature I've read says that if a seahorse is floating at the top of the tank, it swallowed too much air and it will probably naturally die um, just from starvation, not being able to hunt. That is the case with some of the very malnourished animals or animals that seem to have seem to be floating on their sides. Um, I didn't figure this out until I'd probably out of my hundred that I kept, removed 80 animals um, and euthanized them. I, you know, I felt really bad doing it, but I didn't want to risk the water quality by keeping them in there if they were going to die. Turns out they were not going to die. I took some smaller groups of seahorses and was raising them in two and three gallon tanks. Um, and I found that at night, the majority, about 90% of the babies float up to the top and are just kind of floating at the surface of the water at night. And then in the morning, it takes them a while to get going, but they do actually come back from that floating state and swim around and are back to being normal and in the water column again. So I think my mistake is that in the mornings when I was cleaning out and siphoning the tank, I was actually skimming off viable babies that just hadn't woken up yet and gotten going. Um, my guess is that the floating near the surface at night is to keep them up in the water column and from sinking down and possibly getting pulled down into a different current and washed away. So that is one big thing I learned, and that is why I now have only 11 babies instead of, you know, probably 70 or 80 like I should. But the 11 babies I do have right now are all feeding well, and they're getting a lot bigger, and they do have a lot more food since they no longer have all their siblings. But yeah, two big things to note about, at least with raising this species. 
um, keeping the water flow actually slower just so that they can actively feed and then not skimming off the babies at the top in the morning. In the middle of the day in the afternoon there are floaters and they're usually very dead. Um, you can tell they're not moving, they're not twitching, they look skinnier than all their siblings and they float on their sides not with their head pointed towards the surface. If they float with their coronet up um, and they can maintain buoyancy that way they're usually okay. Um, I would recommend if you think that you have animals that you need to euthanize or just remove from the tank and flush them, um, take them out, scoop them out. I was just using a bottle cap to like keep them in the water. Move them into even a one gallon fish bowl with some airflow going. Leave them in there for a day with food in there. If they can rebalance and maintain buoyancy and swim around, you can move them back to the main tank. If they stay floating, go ahead and remove them because they're probably a dead or dying animal. But yep, we'll see how the rest of my projects go, and I'll keep you guys updated probably at random times. Have a good one.